Now entering Nerdist.com. Hey, everybody. Just want to thank you all for downloading. Today we learn number nine. Once again, we want to thank HostGator for uh, sponsoring this episode. HostGator is the best place to get a website. They offer premium web hosting at low costs. Head over to HostGator.com and grab a .NET. Nowadays with .coms being so uh, popular, .NETs are the best way to get a great killer domain name that's not 180 characters. Uh, .NETs are pretty easy to get. Um, HostGator offers 24-7, 365 days, phone, chat, and email support. If you have a problem, they can help you out. They are there to support you. HostGator offers hosting for any size website with shared VPS and dedicated servers. Uh, I don't exactly know what that means, but it's it's pretty awesome from what I'm told. Uh, HostGator can move your site for you as well. So if you have a website and you're not happy with the with the provider you currently have, head over to HostGator and they can move it and transfer it over to HostGator and they'll be able to help you out and uh, take care of you in that respect. So, uh, so when you're done uh, listening to this episode, head over to HostGator.com, buy some hosting, get some .NETs, and uh, use the coupon code LEARNED30. That's learned than the number three and zero to get an extra 30% off and uh, help support the show. Uh, we want to thank you guys for listening as well, and thank you for supporting also. Uh, this episode is a very fun episode. Um, it features Toby Morse from the punk band H2O. Uh, H2O was one of the first punk bands I've seen at Warp Tour um, when I was in high school. I, I've listened to punk for a while. But uh, the first Warped Tour I went to, uh, H2O was one of the first bands I seen when we got there uh, in Pontiac, Michigan, and I've been a fan since, and i seen Toby was on Twitter, so I'm like, hey, Toby, do you want to be on our podcast, etc., etc. We, uh, we headed off. He's a great guest to have. Um, he's also uh, part of an organization called One Life, One Chance, uh, where he goes to schools and does some motivational speaking and all that jazz. Uh, also, H2O is going on tour with Newfound Glory, another great band I enjoy. Uh, they're the start of that tour, I believe, is October 23rd up in San Francisco. So if you, if you like punk rock, pop rock, however you want to call it, uh, Newfound Glory is more pop punk, I guess, but uh, they're, they make some good catchy tunes. Uh, H2O is a great band. I'm going to be going to see them in, in Los Angeles because I'm a huge fan of H2O. Uh, oh, Alkaline Trio is also on that Um uh, that that tour I'm I'm looking on their website right now so that's gonna be a fucking great really really great show Alkaline Trio Newfound Glory H U O go check it out listen to this podcast tell your friends give us a good rating on iTunes and uh, yeah tell your friends to subscribe and uh, this is a fun episode Toby Morse today we learn number nine get it done <laughs> gentlemen let's broaden our minds. All right, hello, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Today We Learned. I'm your host, Dan Casey. And my name is Razzle. And joining us today is a very special guest, Toby Morse from the band H2O. If you guys are hello, here. how are you doing? Good, thank you for joining thank us, Toby. We're still having you here. Thank yeah, you. I'm very excited. The power of Twitter. Oh, exactly, yeah. I love it. compels you. <laughs> uh, we were just talking, uh, um, I guess while, while we were talking about it here, we were just talking about how awesome Breaking Bad is, and we'll get into Which that. is, uh, it's a fact, in case you don't it's, know. That's, that's a, a fact. That's a fact a that you should show. all probably, you should have learned that by now. But if you haven't, you just learned it. Yeah. Yes. So uh, Dan was just about to tell us some awesome trivia um, about Yeah, Breaking we were Bad. just talking about the most recent episode, Ozymandias, uh, King of Kings. Um, and actually, that is uh, one of the, the very last scene they shot for the entire series is at the beginning of that episode when you see the flashback to Walter and Jesse um, out in Tohajili, the Indian re- reservation, oh, where yeah. they first cooked. So that flashback is actually the last day of shooting. So that was uh, just a cool... Wow. Uh, yeah, uh, some people were getting confused online because they saw... Like last thing, Breaking Bad shot. They're like, "Wait, that was the finale." There's so many loose ends. Okay, but okay. No, interesting. Uh, yeah, that's interesting. Just a little, uh, yeah. <laughs> that uh, speaking of Breaking Bad trivia here, uh, on season two, there was that pink teddy bear that uh, came from the the plane crash and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, I was reading on Wikipedia there. Uh, there's a, a portrait in Jane's room, a mural on on Jane's bedroom wall that you can you can see the pink teddy bear on. 
And, uh, Interesting. Oh, it's it's appeared numerous times actually throughout okay. the series. There's uh, it was a, an episode recently. I, I can't recall which one off the top of my head. Um, but you see Jesse or you see Walter go outside, and uh, in, behind him in hanging up in the tree, you see the little pink bear up okay. there. It's also on like the landing of one of the crack houses. They they stick that thing in a lot of different places. Wow, it's a weird little Easter egg that uh, awesome. Vince Gilligan and crew keep. That's awesome. Uh, burying. They're actually, uh, in, in season four, uh, season two, when you see the, it's, it always starts off with like a cold open each episode where there was four episodes throughout season two that featured the teddy bear floating or the teddy bear eye. Yeah. And in each four of those episodes, the title of the episode, if you arrange them in a sentence, it actually says 737 down over ABQ, which is oh, what I was wow. wow. So if you were if you were ca- if you were paying Jeez. attention to the titles of this the episodes while the season was happening, you could have kind of pieced together what actually happened. How positive are we that Vince Gilligan is not in the Illuminati? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's uh, he's a genius man. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, um, what we're talking about, you know, Breaking Bad features talk <clears throat> is, is heavily uh, the the plot revolves around drugs and, mm-hmm. and drug pushes and all that. <clears throat> Toby, you're you're drug free. You're straight edge. Mm-hmm. And you have a uh, you're a motivational speaker for um one life one choice. Correct? One life one chance. One life one chance. I apologize. One no life worries. one chance. O l o c dot com. Yep. And uh, tell us a little bit about that, and tell us about yourself while, while we inform the listeners. Okay, basically, uh, I've been in a band called H two O for almost twenty years, a punk rock band out of New York City, and um. When I got into punk rock in the 80s uh, through my older brothers, it was through skateboarding and then it was through like the Sex Pistols and then uh, whatever, Black Flag, GBH, a lot of the crazy screaming punk rock that was sort of like, can I swear in here? Absolutely. Like, like, Absolutely. Anar- like Anarchy and Fuck Your Parents and Go Against the Grain and, you know, Be Rebellious. And then I heard Minor Threat and then I heard Seven Seconds and then I heard some other types of hardcore that was about, you know, make a difference, make a change, do something positive unity change the world you know equality and um i was only 12 years old i was into skateboarding i was into black flag and the other stuff that made me uh skate aggressively uh, if you will <laughs> and then um and then uh i hadn't tried anything but my my dad died when i was three so i had three brothers and my mom was trying to raise three boys on her own so she started working so many different jobs so my brother started watching me when I, when, I, when I wasn't at my grandparents on the weekends my brothers were taking me to see Descendants and all these great amazing bands when I was super young oh, awesome. so that became like my family and then when I heard Minor Threat I was like wow like this is amazing it's fast it's aggressive the lyrics are incredible and th- th- these guys don't drink or do drugs neither do I and I was like, I don't have to do that to be cool. This is awesome because I don't want to do it. Because my brothers were kind of drinking around me and smoking around me when they were in the house ba- babysitting me and stuff. And um, it totally scared me. So I kind of thank my brothers for scaring me straight and also getting me into punk rock music and skateboarding where I found these amazing bands that changed my life. Fast forward to me becoming a dad, um, me having um, me moving to California. Um, so... A, a school in Queens. It was a teacher. It was H two O fan. Okay. She made a mix CD. And it was like all of her favorite bands, favorite songs to this class in Rockaway Queens. And the kids had to come back from their whatever spring break and tell a, and they write an essay about their favorite song on there. Well, it was a song called Sunday by H two O by us. It's the most personal song I wrote about my dad dying and me becoming a dad. And all these kids that knew nothing about punk rock, just hip hop. And they all wrote me these amazing heartfelt letters. And she's like, you need to come out here and meet these kids. I'm like, why? She's like, well, you're in a band. You're a dad. You're heavily tattooed. You never drank or smoked or did drugs. Come break some stereotypes. Come talk to these kids. And I was like, okay. So <laughs> I put a PowerPoint presentation together. I had, all, I had like index cards ready. And I was talking to my friend who's also a dad. And he's like, well, my daughter's straight age because you want to come speak at her school also. So I oh, had wow. these two H2O shows on a, Thursday and fr- uh, on a Wednesday and Thursday. And then I was going to do my first school on the following Monday. My friend's like, come to my daughter's school on Friday. You can speak to 800 kids. I'm like, so I said, <laughs> oh. I, I said yes, you know, yeah. and I was like, I can do this. I've been on stage. I can grab the mic and mm-hmm. talk to these kids. And, but it's so different. Um, I went there. I, I was about to go on stage. I feel like I was going to shit my pants. And I have my cue cards in my back pocket. And the principal was introducing me. I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? This is crazy. And uh, I walked on stage with my microphone. And I, I just, 
I just did it. I didn't swear. I was yeah. so scared I was going to swear because when you see an H2O show, I'm swearing on myself. Kids know what they paid to see. Yeah, yeah. They know the music. They love us. But when I'm speaking to a whole room of little kids, it's like so different. Yeah. Don't fucking do drugs. No. <laughs> and the thing about it is, it's not, and, and my thing's not like that because <laughs> yeah. I had dare. I had scared straight. My approach is not that. Mm-hmm. Check me out. I look like a tattooed freak. Yeah. I've never been arrested. I've been around all these people my whole life with drugs. These are my fr- I have a power. These are my friends who passed away from drugs. This is the music that inspired me to become positive and live this lifestyle. I haven't ate meat since 1988 because of Gorilla Biscuits. I don't really talk about the vegan thing because I don't be too. I don't want like put that down there. But they asked me like, "How do you look so young when you're 43?" Yeah. Well, this is my diet. Yeah. Um, anyway, so it went super good. The kids connected, and the best thing about it is the Q and A afterwards. The kids asked me so many questions. Nobody really even believes at first when they see me on stage. Like, really, this guy. He doesn't do any drugs. He's in the band. Like, (laughs) look at this freak. Um, And it just spiraled, man. Then I did the school on Monday in Rockaway, Queens. And, like, it got super emotional. Kids are reading me these letters. I was talking about my dad. I was like, I want to do this. So it's only been not even three years. I did 26 schools already. Wow. And I just got my nonprofit at the end of last year. I have a whole board of directors. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I I love it. And it's like, I want to do it full time. But it's not that easy because I have H2O that I do also. Mm -hmm. And... My ultimate dream is to do schools during the year and do um, tour in the summer with H2O. Nice. Yeah. You know, yeah, kind of balance new, it. New albums for us fans? Yeah, new <laughs> albums. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that, that's being worked on uh, okay. soon. Okay. But anyway, so One Life, One Chance, that, that's it. That's my, that's my, uh, my whole goal is to go to schools and inspire kids to, to, to make healthy life choices. It's not about be straight as and do this. You know, it's, it's about everything, racism, skateboarding. Yeah. Punk rock, breaking stereotypes, becoming a dad, growing up with no dad, uh, having the right role models. Do kids have any, have any role models? There's so many terrible things that kids are exposed to um, at a very young age that we were never exposed to. Like, yeah. you just go on YouTube, or click a button, you can see anything. It's like, it's super scary being a parent. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> so, I like that approach, too, because I feel like the whole dare thing, you know, is it shoves don't so yeah, much down people's throats that makes you curious. I don't yeah. know about you guys, but my dare officer was like the least trustworthy guy <laughs> I'd met. So everything, <laughs> I, I was taking everything he said with like a crystal sized grain of salt. Like yeah. It was, uh, yeah, it, you know, it's it's obviously an important program and I understand yeah. the, uh, the goal of it, but I think they're, uh, uh, what you're doing uh, with one life, one chance uh, is chance or choice. I chance, chance. chance. Okay, cool. Sorry, <laughs> yeah. nailed it. Uh, <laughs> I think that I think that's a much smarter, Approach. more relatable. Because you know that kids are they're listening to music. They're obviously looking up to musicians to begin yep. with. So this is it. Just makes more sense uh, yeah. from uh, trying to connect with them. And okay. there's so many people they can relate to. I have a, CM Punk's one of my best friends. He's a pro wrestler who's mm-hmm. straight edge and there's yeah. so many kids all over the world becoming straight edge because of a wrestler that's amazing. not because that's of music awesome. my friend cg wilson uh he pitches in the uh, angels he's okay. been straight edge his whole life he has x's in his glove he's in my powerpoint uh, my friend so many so many people i have in there like that they can relate to like these guys do they don't do it either look how successful they are they still have fun they go to parties they live their lives but they're yeah. not like they didn't give in to peer pressure they didn't give in to stuff they didn't want to do yeah and they just made these smart decisions you they know? can so, still appreciate Breaking Bad yes yeah. and they do they do appreciate Breaking mm-hmm. Bad yeah <laughs> I'll tell you what too uh, I used to be in a band and going from being on a stage with a, you know your friends playing instruments exactly, the transition. to going on stage with just yourself and a microphone is vastly different so like, different man it's so different you know. People think it was going to be so easy. Like, oh, it's just like being on stage. No, it's not, man. It's, it's way different. And, and and so, like, one, one more thing I want to say about it, like, yeah, Absolutely. like you said, like, people saying, don't do this, don't do that. I, I, that's not how I am in my own band or in my own life or even being a father. It's like, if you do that to a kid, it's just like any other adult telling them what not to do. They're going to mm-hmm. rebel against it. You know what yeah. I mean? My approach is, check this out. This is me. These are my friends. This is why I look like this and why I turned out this way. And... You can make any decision you want to make, and hopefully, a couple of kids in this room get inspired yeah. from yeah. what I just my life story. Yeah, and putting the agency in their hands. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. it. I like it, and I, I, I appreciate you. everything you're doing for the today's youth. Yeah, thank you. And uh, speaking of straight edge, um, I'm not. I don't. I'm not really. I, I don't drink or smoke or do it. You know, do any drugs. Uh, I don't really refer to myself as straight yeah. edge or anything like that. But there are a few. You're straight edge, so I'm curious because I'm looking on Wikipedia here and. It's uh, there's various forms of straight edge. Um, now there's some people are vegetarian, vegan. Some people abstain from promiscuous sex, caffeine, and all of that sorts. How specific of a straight edge? Are you? I mean, I, I didn't even know I was straight edge until I heard minor threat. I, I, I guess I was already living like that because okay. I was I was only yeah. 12 years old, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, it's interesting because um, I actually watched an interview with Ian McKay recently, 
about the lyrics to that song and what he was talking about in that particular part of his life. A lot of those lyrics are about certain circumstances he was going with, dealing with in his life, and then people kind of took it and it be kind of they kind of made it their own thing out of that one song. You know, like that song changed so many people's lives. But it's just once again, it's a personal song that he wrote. Yeah. You know, like it's about his personal life and some people would take it to extremes some people took it to extremes in the 90s there was a lot of violence you know people people being violent with calling themselves straight edge and doing different things and some people took it in a positive way some people would you know they didn't want to have sex before marriage that's their personal choice you yeah. know and like so for me i mean i've been married for almost 20 years you know i uh you know i do drink caffeine yes um what else? What else you say in there? Uh, veganism, which you, you don't. Yeah, I mean, I've been meat or fish since 1988, but that was because I lived with this band called Grilla Biscuits in, in, oh, Queen, awesome. in Queens, in, <laughs> in Queens, New York, and they inspired me to become vegetarian, get involved in animal rights, and then I just started in 1988. You know, my son's never ate meat. He's eight, he's nine, uh, ten years old. My wife was vegan like 18 years. Oh wow! It's just total like healthy vegetarian vegan family, and. Uh, yeah, so music really changed my life in a positive way. And the Bad Brain's talking about PMA, Positive Mental Attitude, and their song called Attitude. And um, But yeah, but Straight Edge to me, I mean, it's just, an, it's, 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 you know, it's definitely, it's not, a, it's not really, it's, a, it's not a life, I don't think it's a lifestyle, it's just who I am. I wake yeah. up in the morning, I brush my teeth, I'm not going to drink a beer. Yeah. It's just Absolutely. something, you know, but, yeah. and like. Or but, orange juice. Yeah, but, well, it tastes, it tastes terrible after you brush your teeth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, Straight for me, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs. Yeah. You know, I have a positive, healthy lifestyle, and um, I don't really like to label myself, but, you know, Straight Edge definitely describes a lot of who I am. Yeah. And that song changed my life, so yeah. yeah. Straight Edge by Minor Threat yes. is where the term comes from, also on Wikipedia, for those of you. Fun fact. Mm-hmm. Uh, There's a lot of weird facts in Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It. <laughs> you gotta be yeah. careful there. It's, uh, if you start looking up one thing, then uh, ten hours later, you yeah. finally find your way to Spanish flu. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of speaking of music, Minor Threat's a, a, a band. Um, on the here's a fun fact. I'm not sure if iOS seven if it's still in the new updated version or not. But on the iPhone and uh, the music side of the app, I'm, I'm going to it now mm-hmm. just because it's it's still interesting. Yeah, you have a new one. At. Nothing's better on podcast than visual aids. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you have an iPhone, you can pull it out and, yeah. and check it out right now. Exactly. This is uh, the interactive segment, guys. I didn't download iOS seven yet. My my buddies have. But when are we getting that sent to our phone? Today, I think. Oh, we're today. Supposed to get it today, oh, Wednesday. Sh- we're recording this on Wednesday the 18th mm-hmm. for, for those of you listening. <laughs> so I'm excited. Sorry. And if you have an I'm Android so phone like me, just glaze over for a minute. <laughs> glaze over what we're talking about. But anyways, on the music app. Uh, on the iPhone, um, there's a playlist section, an artist section, song section, album section. The they all have uh, various icons. The artist icon is actually a silhouette of U2's Bono. Little fun fact <laughs> to show how much of a, a U2 fan. That's him. Yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's actually Bono. that this picture's the... actually to scale. He's that small in real life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a new version or something. No, or? this is this is the old iOS. So that's I'm not really sure. If, wow. Yeah, it's a silhouette of Bono. That's a. Uh, Little fun fact. I mean, it's yeah. it's no no well, surprise the, that Steve Jobs was a fan of U two. That's and cool. Including their their uh, music and commercials. On the new one, it's actually a silhouette of the Edge. <laughs> Bono got or, bumped. Or the bass player. Nobody knows yeah. the name of. <laughs> what is his name? There's a. It's not even on no, Wikipedia. Adam it's Clayton. Super weird. Adam Clayton. No, he was a, that's drummer. a drummer. That's a drummer. Oh. <laughs> Damn, that's a good. Yeah. That's a good fun fact. Yeah, yeah, that's that's like a bar trivia question waiting to happen. What like, is the bass player's <laughs> name of U <you> two? <laughs> That's funny. Uh, yeah, that's a little fun fact. Now, you mentioned you're from New York, and um, you lived there for a bit. Uh, and obviously, you know, it's month of September right now, and, you know, World Trade Center happened. Mm-hmm. Um, they were recently, uh, they were building up a, a new tower. I actually went um, there. To the new tower? How, how is that looking? I went there with a couple of friends. One of my friends is an officer in New York, and we got to go there a month ago. We got to wear hard helmets and go in the top of the building. Oh, wow. With five of my friends. Oh, wow. Um, it was surreal. It was amazing, man. Just to be in there and hear the stories of a bunch of uh, other people that um, had been there for 20 years. Yeah. We were at the first bombing at the first World Trade Center. And then, like, yeah, it was, we, we signed the wall with a bunch of families and other artists that had been there. It was it was, it was awesome. It was kind of awesome. scary, actually. Because we did the elevator that was outside at one point. Oh, okay. like I, the, actually, I actually had to sit down. Like because the construction. It was, those elevator. construction, yeah. Those. It was so loud, and it was, it was just these, these kind of graded kind of things. You can't reach out. I, I freaked out. I sat down on the floor. All my friends were laughing Ooh. at me. How many stories up were, uh, were you guys, give or take? Okay, so it's the, high, it's the tallest building <laughs> in, northern, in uh, North America, right? So yep. what, what is, uh, it's like 
80, man? 80-something? I went to the top, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay, what, what is the Willis... I call it the Willis Tower. That's the original name of the Chicago Tower. Yeah. 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 Well, so, now the Sears Tower uh, is now Se- the Willis Sears Tower. Sears and Willis, yeah. I went to that, too. It's taller than... I don't know how many floors it is, man. It's a good... Fun That's fact. Good, uh, High enough that everyone looks like fact, uh, fact, yeah, action figures. Anyway, I went in it. It was it was it was an amazing experience, man. It was. The, uh, it's well, scary. that's interesting that you that you're you're talking about going up on the the service elevator because while they were constructing it to save time on on workers lunch period which was like a thirty minute period they actually uh, facilitated they got a subway on a on a trailer car, like a mobile subway a mobile restaurant subway that would raise each floor that they were working on to save the workers time from going up and down because it would it would take about 90 minutes overall for their lunch to Whoa. go yeah. down and up apparently so, uh yeah it would take it would take too long for their lunch break and they saved about 90 rides uh yeah. per day because just the amount of people that have to shuttle back and forth for uh, just a normal wow. lunch yeah. break yeah that's yeah. crazy i like your, i like your air force 1 so there they are those yeah are nice. <laughs> oh thank <laughs> you yes yes i'm uh these are I think Nike Vandals, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very shiny. I like Thank that. Thank you. Yeah, and it, it um they they it would take like uh like thirty minutes longer to actually run the workers down and believe it or not, they in order to to stay profitable, the subway would need to sell about two hundred meals a day just to break even. But oh. in in retrospect, they only ended up doling out about ninety, which means the construction and all that needed to eat the costs just mm-hmm. to keep the subway there. So they ate wow. the costs that they lost, but in worker productivity, I guess. I will it, say it I will for. say two things about that. One, Subway's actually the uh largest they have the most franchises of any fast food chain anywhere in the world, mm-hmm. so I think they can eat that. I understand that it's like a franchise thing, but I feel like they'd make certain exceptions for yeah. a project of that nature. Yeah. But also, I, I expect a little bit more. I thought construction workers were supposed to be the most comically hungry workers yeah. uh, anywhere. Like, you always see the pictures of them with giant sub sandwiches. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they maybe, also, they like, were just, maybe they just ordered the big one they and also they like just greasy, all split it. Greasy, grimy, you know, yeah. like foods and Subway is, is a healthier restaurant than Well, they have sandwich artists. Yeah. <laughs> Starving <Sandwich>. artists. <laughs> Here's a... I, I have a fun uh, fact for you. Okay. Go on. In, uh, in the 80s, I worked at Subway when I lived in Maryland because I moved all over the East Coast. And the only, one of the only tattoos I had on my arm was my Meet is Murder tattoo. Okay. <laughs> and, they, and, and they ordered me a long sleeve shirt. I had to wear it. Really? Because they didn't want people to see when I was making their sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> were you the, were the only one who had to wear a long sleeve shirt? Yeah. Oh, that my was God. amazing. That was like 80s. I don't know when it was. But, wow. Yeah, that's amazing. It's messed up. Um, <laughs> I looked it up here, and the One World Trade Center, the new, the new Trade Center building that they're constructing okay. in New York, is 1,776 feet. Oh, I see what they did there. Yeah. So it's also uh, how many floors though? Yeah, um, 104 floors. Okay, I went up to 102. I didn't go up to the past oh, two. Okay. Yeah. it's crazy, man. Well, you have to have a reason to come back. Well, I feel like yeah. does no. It says 104 floors. Does that mean the two that you didn't go on was part of the steeple? Is that yeah, considered I think, a floor? I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think that's what you're telling me. That's yeah. That's the, wild. The, the very top <laughs> is reserved for uh, radioactive monkeys to climb up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The uh, here's something I learned the other day. Um, the the steeple on uh, the Empire State Building mm-hmm. was actually constructed as a uh, disembarking and a um, a loading for uh, zeppelins back in the day when when they were trying oh my to God. when they were trying to make zeppelins a thing before uh, <laughs> wow. before uh, Cor- before Cor- 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 zeppelins Cor- Cor- happened before before uh, what was the one that I'm drawing the Hindenburg here? the Hindenburg before yes. the Hindenburg exploded wow. they were really trying to make it a, a profitable you know way oh of God. transportation there's there's like so many uh, like alternate history yeah. sci-fi authors that are just like shaking their fist angrily at the future that <laughs> I mean, could have been I mean it would be cool to see zeppelins like attached on tops of buildings yeah. but I don't even like walking outside of an airport to walk up steps to get onto a small plane yeah. let alone unloading that's, uh, that's the worst feeling that's man. like the worst thing you could ever hear if you're a like, steampunk would, like knowing the truth behind it I would not want to be t- coming down steps to a steeple yeah a thousand feet in the air no I'm, I'm good with that no thank you Take no thank you uh, <laughs> while we're talking about buildings here there uh the um I uh I used to be quite the gambler and, oh yeah um, I used to go to Vegas quite a bit, and uh, one of the uh, one of my favorite casinos is the Luxor in Vegas. It's the one shaped like a pyramid. They, uh, gotcha. They, that's the one where they got that big old light on the top of the pyramid. Mm-hmm. And believe it or not, um, that is you know the standard. It's a spotlight and it's a searchlight. And what 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 uh, I guess the definition of, of what the searchlight is is it's you know it's got the light and then it's got mirrors surrounding it to to make it a powerful light. 
Ooh. The the light on the top of the Luxor Hotel in, in, in Vegas is actually the surface area, the size that, that that spotlight is, is twice as bright as the same size on the sun. So the same, the same surface area on the wow. sun. That um, that's, actually is, that's terrifying because yeah. I feel like that could be that's that sounds like the plot of like the next Ocean's movie yeah. like the casino mogul is going to take that and focus it on like a national monument. Yeah, he's going to fire at Mount Rushmore and burn, burn off in Lincoln's face. The um, yeah, it's the uh, I'm I'm looking up here on you know on, on Wikipedia as well. The world's most powerful searchlight today beams from the top of the pyramid shaped Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas. The beam concentrates about. 13,650,000 lumens from 39 7-kilowatt xenon lamps into its beam of about 9 billion candelella. Whatever, yeah. whatever candela. Can, candela, yeah. Candela. The, the, the brightness emanating from the Luxor lamp room is about twice that which emanates from the equal area on the sun's surface, about 95 million versus 45 million uh, CD Jesus, feet man. squared. That's bright. How much do we have to like? How much would it take for Kickstarter to put in like a little bat signal, uh, <laughs> like uh, like symbol on there? Because I, I'm just saying, Warner Brothers, if you're listening, and I know you are, uh, that would be a good uh, good little promotion for I mean, Batman not, Superman. Not even that. Not even that. Just, or just Ben Affleck's face. How about how about starting a Kickstarter to launch a giant disco ball up above it? <laughs> That'd be sick. So <laughs> like like if it's that bright of a light, yeah. just point it at a disco ball. Exactly. And that's, you, that's just the, pay, you just pay a. Uh, we can get a zeppelin. A zeppelin uh, to just <laughs> oh dangle God. it beneath. <laughs> <laughs> a giant disc. Have the Goodyear blimp yeah. and co- encased in mirrors. Come on, Goodyear. We know you. You can't be flying over football games year round. You gotta yeah. have. You gotta have a fallback plan. And we just came <laughs> up with it. That's awesome. Uh, here's a fun fact. We 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 like to mix it up on here. Um, we like to speak about languages and all that. And you mentioned swearing. Um, uh, asking if we could swear or not. I was recently in uh, Virginia Beach for a friend of mine's wedding. And uh, apparently, there's you can get fined for cursing on in Virginia Beach. They oh have, wow! They have the Ghostbusters no sign all around the beach area with you know the asterisks and the the <laughs> so lightning it's, bolts. It's and like all a that. ghost swearing. Yeah, like like there's <laughs> Ghostbusters for swearing. I guess that you can get like a two hundred fifty dollar fine if you're caught swearing. And I seen these, and I was wondering like what exact like there's got to be a name for what the you know the the swearing mm-hmm. is when it's just yeah. a bunch of symbols yeah. and there actually is it is it it's is called a growlix g r a w l i x perfect scrabble word yeah a growlix it's the uh, spiral shaped graphic used to indicate swearing in comic qu- quotations so <laughs> anytime you see a typographical symbol you know like the at symbol the pound dollar lightnings it's usually used to uh to mean swearing and cursing it's, uh, or it's cubert trying to communicate <laughs> Is Virginia still for lovers, though? <laughs> it's, I'll tell you what, that I, the Virginia Beach is like it's like the go-to for I guess people over there. But I like there's it's the worst place I've ever been. Like really? I, I apologize if you live there. Actually, I don't don't live there. Um, <laughs> yeah. There's really good shows there, though. There's a great scene there. Yeah, I have great shows in Virginia Beach, man. We play there, but I don't know about living there. So. Yeah, and yeah, I, it's, I, I, it. it's a good place to visit. They, yeah. they apparently have, I've never been it's right by an air force base so like I mean we were there for a weekend for a wedding and yeah. like they like every 15 minutes they got like F-18s flying over and it's just like the first three are like holy cow that's cool and then <laughs> the so, the subsequent I've, airplanes are pretty I swear on stage when I'm there I can do that I think so I mean as far you as I know you have to yell out it, like pound sign at symbol the, dollar sign <laughs> <laughs> I would actually. You have to add a few measures in your songs to include that there. Um, oh my god, that's funny. But I, the thing is, too, is I got. I don't. It might not be the entire Virginia Beach metropolitan area. Okay. It might just be that touristy, that four block radius uh-huh. on the beach. That makes sense. Because there are, you know, there there are comedy clubs like yes, you know, the, four the miles from the beach and all that. Like of Virginia Beach. I think there's a House of Blues over there. I think or a Hard Rock. Um, I believe so. I, I gotta imagine it. You know, it's not super enforced. It's but. actually the soft rock <laughs> cafe there. Yeah, so that's that was uh, that was pretty interesting. But I, I never knew that it was there was a word for it, and it's Growlix. Yeah, that's which is honest. also a comedy group in uh in, in in Colorado. There's a comedy group oh, called the Growlix. Good to know. Go yeah. see Growlix next time you're in Colorado. Yeah. yeah, free plug. Yeah, or go see them in Virginia Beach and not swear in Pompano yeah. <laughs> Pompano Beach. 
Florida, there was no swearing at the Warp Tour every year. Really? really? Yeah, and there's police on horses going around making sure it's not happening on the, <laughs> on the, on the bands during on stage. That's the, really? funny, that's the funniest yeah. enforcement method for s- swearing at a concert. Just keeping an eye on uh, you. Nothing will spook horses like loud music. <laughs> <laughs> It's true, though. That's, that's a real fact. Yeah. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. They ride off the stage afterwards, and the horses just mosh with the rest of the crowd. I'm trying to think of, like, the top. I'm, I'm just trying to think of, like, no effects songs that they cannot play. Like, they just yeah. give you a list. Yeah. <laughs> Eminem was on Eminem. that year, and he, he he didn't follow the rules. I remember that year. That was uh, that was with um, Jurassic 5, I think, was yeah. on that year, too. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, Blink was on that year, I believe. That was uh, 2000, and I think, right? They swear, too. A lot of bands yeah. swear. Yeah. Are those bracelets on your wrist? From events you went to, yeah, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen, honestly. Because I always keep mine for a couple of days. So does my wife and son. But you kept those for months, huh? Or years? Oh, some of these are years. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for those of you that can't see, um, you got to post that on Twitter. And Instagram. Yeah, you, there, you, you might be able to see it on my profile picture on Twitter. You, you should. Uh, when you when you go to concerts or you know bars or whatever, they give you a wristband that lets you know you're 21 or whatever. And I just keep them on my wrist, and then I fold them in half generally. And then they'll fall <clears> off, <throat> and then I'll just retie them on. And over time, they get you know disheveled, and they mm-hmm. just—I think they look really cool. You know, it's got some color, and then a lot of it's just faded beige. I've, I've never seen that. It's a, it's I've a, never seen him wear them that long. Yeah, yeah. I have a fun fact for you. Okay, absolutely. he was just saying he was wearing those wristbands because for drinking or not drinking. Well, the X in for Straight Edge came from when kids went to all ages shows and they were younger. Yeah, and they weren't allowed okay. to be served alcohol. They put a magic mark, whoop, X on your hand, and that became the symbol for straight edge. Okay. Which was always the hardest thing to scrub off the next day. Totally. Like, you would, loo- you would lose a couple layers of skin. Or that yeah. thick marks a lot marker, remember yeah. that? It's like, I, we got a guy, look, I'm not going to drink here. I'm 18. Please. Just, can you make it a small... I'm going to poison your skin. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> just draw a mustache on Yeah, you. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I, don't, I refrain from doing drugs or alcohol. But you're getting me high off the fumes that, yeah. from this marker. Is this scratch and sniff? I can't be around this. <laughs> That's cool. So it's uh, it, what started as like a, a negative thing from not you know being able to get into shows mm-hmm. um, and not being able to do that. It turned into a positive thing yep. of you know of uh, you embrace it. I guess you embrace, embrace, totally. embrace the label. That's cool. Yep. And that's really neat. Uh, while we're talking about concerts, I guess and still going on. This blew my mind. The other day, uh, I'm I'm pretty versed in music, um, and I'm I'm a I, you know I used to be in a band, but I this and I'm a huge Who fan, and this is what's going to startle some of you or startle you know you, you guys here. I was watching Newsroom. I'm a fan of Newsroom, and at the end of the season finale for Newsroom, uh, the song "Let My Love Open the Door" came on, and it was a cover song. And I for some reason I, I always confused it with a different song that is escaping me now. Uh, but I looked it up, and apparently this. I'm I'm still dumbfounded that I didn't know this. Pete Townsend was originally the he originally wrote and recorded "Let My Love Open the Door." Mm, I didn't know that. Know that I've either. always heard it, and I just never realized who it was. You know, it's it's uh, kind of like there's a song that Billy Squire does that sounds just like a Led Zeppelin song, <laughs> but it's really Billy Squire ripping off Led Zeppelin. But um, the uh, yeah, "Let My Love Open the Door" is actually by Pete Townsend, and believe it or not, that's his only solo American top ten hit, which charted at number nine. And apparently, according to the internet, uh, the Who, uh, their songs have only reached number nine as well. They've never had any song over over number wow. nine. Wow! So that's that's quite interesting. That uh, yeah, I don't know. Nice. Un- unrelated, but sort of similar with uh, confusing one artist for another. Um, the, I can't remember which outlet it was, but uh, it was a, a pretty major outlet. It might have been CNN because um, they've been screwing up left and right recently. Um, they reported they they reported on a. Uh, Johnny Cat, they they attributed to the song "Hurt" to Johnny Cash. And they were talking about Nine Inch Nails's cover of that song. Okay. Whereas, uh, you know, the fuck. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm sorry. I, this is Nine off topic hurt. entirely. I hurt myself today. Yeah. Um, yeah. Johnny Cash covered that. Rick Rubin yeah, exactly. produced it, which is yep. he, which is a, he's one of the my favorite producers. Um, he produced that, and uh, I, I actually read a quote about that from Trent Reznor saying, "It's now we're covering a Johnny Cash song because he Johnny Cash's song was his version was so awesome." Yeah. Um, and if you put the, the the refrain in that song, "I want to fuck you like an animal," into Google Translate, back and forth from English to Japanese, about three or four times, <laughs> it becomes "fuck." I hope you like animals. <laughs> so that's awesome. I love Fun Google facts. Translate. Um, <laughs> Here's here's a here's a uh, oh, I guess keeping on you know 
on random topics of, of, of not drinking and sodas and all that. Uh, there's a chemical, I guess. Uh, we're a huge fan of Segways. We'll, yeah. Uh, we're, we're, not, not the two-wheeled gyroscopic vehicle, yeah, mind we, you. Uh, we, we say this every episode, and I'm sure people are sick of listening to it, but <laughs> we, we're, we're, we're horrible at Segways, and we, we love Segways. Like, we'll, we'll, we'll find the, the... We'll stretch it so as far as we can. Speaking of potassium benzoate, <laughs> I'm so glad you brought it up. So, guys, the preservative used in sugary soft drinks, uh, also known as potassium benzoate, uh, this is actually the same substance that's used to make the whistling sound in fireworks. So, you know, when it fires off and you hear that whistle and you're just waiting for it, waiting for it, that is the same thing that's used to preserve soft drinks. Yeah, yeah. And it, it works best in low pH That's products. why it's an explosion of flavor in your mouth, <laughs> like it's an explosion of light up in the sky. Yeah. That's, that's scary, the, right? It is, it is, and it, it's interesting too because uh, um, it's you know chemistry, you know tying it back to yeah. Breaking Bad. Uh, like if you put, um, uh, di- there's different salts and sugars mm-hmm. that you can put them on bonfires, and it'll make different types of sparks. So it's it's really interesting, you know, uh, the various forms of you know even they're edible, but when you burn it, it just it, it causes a different color of a yeah, flame. Yeah, yeah. So it's really interesting that. Well, what's even interesting, more interesting to me, is that somebody, like, they're like, hey, let's put this in here. And then they, they somebody took the time to experiment with putting it in a firework. Like, how, yeah, many, yeah. How, many, <laughs> how many other powders did they put in fireworks before they got that whistle sound that they wanted? That's true. No, that's more of a tweeting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a low hum. <laughs> yeah, I, I am curious as to uh, what other sound effects they had to rule out or if they're like, we need that... You know when you throw that, like, Nerf football with the little whistle in it? We want that sound. Yeah. That's funny. That's yeah, funny. a lot of good facts, man. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take this home and show my wife. Absolutely. Please really, do, by all absolutely. means. I'm going to check it out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, somewhere, here's somewhere that you probably wouldn't get soda. Prison. Specifically Alcatraz. Although, it should be said, Alcatraz, you know, it's one of the most famous prisons in the world. Uh, the Rock takes place there. Wonderful movie. Great movie. But... Here's a fun fact about it. It was once the only federal penitentiary in the United States that provided hot showers for its inmates. Because the prison staff reasoned that inmates who were used to warm, comfortable water would not be able to withstand the San Francisco Bay's freezing water if they tried to escape. So, you know, just trying to, like, kill them with kindness. Yeah. that's uh, Alcatraz is interesting to me, too, um, because I've always thought Alcatraz was like, like I knew it was near San Francisco, um, but I was looking at a map and it's actually in between, I believe, San Rafael, Berkeley, and San Francisco in like the Bay Area. I always thought it was more in the ocean. Like I always thought Alcatraz was off the, the oh, San Francisco yeah. coast in the ocean. And it's actually really guarded by land. So, I mean, mm-hmm. which, you know. <laughs> It's like right next to I didn't realize like Berkeley and all of them were so close and Rance has actually mm-hmm. started in Berkeley to tie it back to punk rock. Yep. Um I went to Alcatraz three weeks ago. Yeah. Oh wow. For the first time, me and my wife and my son, because my son uh, had to read a book on Al Capone this summer okay. for school. And then at the end of the year he did a report on Alcatraz. Okay. And so we went there, it was awesome. That's awesome. Did you it was so fun with did you have any did you do you retain did you retain any any tour tips or anything like that from Alcatraz? Um, Definitely, definitely use the headphones. Yeah, it's so entertaining. Um, it's so crowded, but uh, yeah, it's really good. Uh, I wanted to go and um, uh, what was it? I'm spacing now. Yeah, solitary confinement. Okay, uh-huh. I didn't get to do that though. Yep. I heard you go in there for like one minute and you freak out, just like the little square in the. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine. Uh, I didn't get to do that, but I wanted to do that. But my son loved it and they have like the original. When the guys escaped and they used like wax and toilet paper to make their heads and cut their own hair off, okay. they actually have those still in the beds. Really? Yeah, they look creepy. <laughs> really how creepy. welcoming. That was a good movie. <laughs> it's uh, creepy looking. That was a really good movie. Um, Clint Eastwood, Escape oh, yeah. from Alcatraz. Yeah. That was really interesting. That um, And The Rock is great. Yeah. That, uh, Green smoke. N- now, how long of a ferry trip is it to get to Alcatraz from the coast? It's like coast? 20 minutes, 25 oh, wow. minutes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's pretty, it's pretty uh, easy from like the... Uh, very and, and you're you're there for how long is like the tour like how long do you get to hours, hang out there? right not even that but the, the, the one with the earphones that was like maybe a little over an hour but it's okay. cold out there man yeah oh, need a yeah. jacket but I great got... great showers i hear water pressure is wonderful i'm sure yeah <laughs> now um you mentioned solitary confinement uh 
and how that you know that can drive you nuts. My brother was telling me about these anic- anachaic chambers, um, if I'm pronouncing them correctly, like sensory deprivation chambers. Oh, uh, oh yes. yeah, my friends do that. Go ahead. But my brother was telling me about there's these ones that like a lot of them are will put you in like fluid and all that. But mm-hmm. he he was telling me um, I don't know all the details, but he said there's these ones that are either getting banned or something because they're so like secluded. Like you don't hear anything other than you'll start to you can hear your internal body, and that'll it's like creepy, drive you nuts man. because that's it's, some, that's it's so quiet and so sensory deprivation type of a thing. You you can hear your own internal things, and it it kind of drives you even nuts. So that I guess they're kind of stopping. That's like the wow. short story Edgar Allan Poe would write if you were around yeah. today. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah, that might make you not want to be relaxed. No, yeah. Freaking yeah, out. no. <laughs> be like, get me out of here. Yeah, and so what, what, do, what do you knock on? How do you get out of there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How do you do that? How do you get out of there if you want to get out? Uh, you have to achieve transen- transcendence. Your <laughs> yeah, spirit will be astrally projected. That's, that's interesting the because if it is plane. like... We start having panic attacks or yeah, something. Maybe. Yeah. Because if it does remove sound and all of that, aside from that, how do, you, how do people hear you on the outside? That's scary. <laughs> I hope there's like a safe word release mechanism. <laughs> yeah, <But> banana. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah, that is pretty nuts. It's too, um, too relaxed. Uh, moving from sensory deprived to just plain senseless, yeah. uh, and back to the subject of buildings. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys heard about this, but there is a skyscraper under construction in London at 20 Fenchurch Street, um, and this, it, they, they, it's there's glass on the outside of it. Uh, and it's incredibly reflective, but it, they didn't quite understand that for a couple hours each day, it essentially works like a magnifying glass, and the rays were so intense, it melted someone's Jaguar, their car. Oh, wow. It melted their car. And what? people, like, it's, obviously this was terrible PR for the construction company, because they didn't realize, like, someone should have, you know, thought about this, but someone's car got melted, they replaced it. Uh, but what's happened now is they've had scores of people coming out there to fry eggs. People oh, wow. can actually fry an egg wow. with the beams and they've had to like station police officers there to prevent people from uh, frying eggs on the sidewalk. They actually had a similar occurrence in Death Valley. People were going out there frying eggs on the ground and so much so they had to like put out a public service announcement like please stop doing this. There's egg everywhere. Oh wow. Are homeless people doing it's regular people? <laughs> <laughs> I I'd imagine I'd imagine it's people uh regular people. Uh if a homeless person had eggs in the skillet, they could yeah. probably do it. But um just going off of uh what I would presume, yeah. I imagine it's just uh your average breakfast based thrill seeker. Wow. And I have another question. Was the Jaguar the only car parked there? Uh it was yeah, I think so. <laughs> Because if not, it's a bad look for Jaguars. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I I think it was the only car that got melted. It was specifically it's, like wow. someone's Jaguar, which that would be like. Why couldn't it have been like someone's Oldsmobile or like their Pinto? Well, that would have exploded. I'll tell you what, I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of the Jaguar, anyways. Me like, either, I don't, man. That that the hood ornament is like just and, and then even on the back, the the leaping Jaguar, it's not symmetrical to the back of the automobile at all. It's like ah. Uh. It just it drives me nuts when I'm behind Jaguars. I'm uh, like, oh, it's, I'm you and your off-center luxury. Oh, oh that's oh, I hate it. But well, that's uh, that's um, we're approaching our our, mm-hmm. our closing time, and uh, we want to thank you guys for listening. Um, Toby, uh, appreciate you joining yeah, us. Thank Thanks you so for much. Having me. Thank and, you. Uh, what do you got coming up? What do you want to promote? What do you want to plug? Now's your what speaking. do I got? Uh, October twenty second, we start a U.S. tour with Alkaline Trio and Newfound Glory. Yes. Oh, nice. So, please make them. Pl- please make Al- Alkaline Trio play radio nonstop. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell Matt Skiba. <laughs> thank you. Um, and then I got some schools coming up in October, and we're going to be working on a new album because oh, we I'm haven't excited. had a record out since two thousand eight, and we've been touring like crazy since then. So we're going to work on songs on that tour and hopefully record a record in january okay so yeah i like it now where uh the tour starts this october yes correct yep. which uh where do you know the first date of the tour the first day of the tour is san francisco october 24th okay when is the los angeles i'll let date? you guys know i can say it right now absolutely uh i'm gonna pull it up i don't know my, my, is, this, is this pause going to mess everything up? Oh, no. No, no, no. That's, that's fine. Do you guys well, edit this thing? You guys can talk. We can talk, yeah. yeah. Well, we, uh, we want to thank everybody for listening as he's looking for the, the Los Angeles date. Um, you can follow us on our, you know, like us on our Facebook, follow us on Twitter, TWL Podcast. Um, 
Download and, us, subscribe, tell all your friends. Give us a good rating if you can. Exactly. Really Thank you so it. much to those uh, listeners out there. We've had some yeah. really positive reviews on iTunes. Yeah, and we really uh, appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, it warms us down to the cockles of our heart. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we do, we do appreciate it. Um, we, yeah, I mean, I know we say it every time, but we really appreciate it. We enjoy doing this, and we hope to continue making more. And, uh, you know, we, we do this for you guys as much as for our own enjoyment and to stroke our egos. Mm-hmm. And if you'd like to stroke our egos a bit further, you can reach us on Twitter. I am at Osteoferocious. And I am at My Name is Razzle and the number two. And uh, I actually have, uh, I, I just acquired a, a, a stack of Nerdist stickers. So um, send us some facts. Uh, if, if you have any facts or anything you recently learned, uh, send us the, send us. Send them our way via Twitter or our Twitters or email at twlpodcast at gmail dot com. And uh, if we end up using your fact or whatever, I'll I'll contact you and I'll mail you a free sticker if you want. And uh, once again, we appreciate you listening. And uh, Toby's got that October twenty sixth in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Do you have where? <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep looking. We'll uh, we'll keep. No. Can, we'll, yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna be on a zeppelin flying we'll, around the yeah, city. We'll so just vamping. follow it on the four five. Um, um, hit be, me up on Twitter. Absolutely. Well, uh, what is your uh, what is your Twitter at, handle? At Toby Morse. Wonderful. Wonderful. So guys, thanks again. This has been today we learned, and we hope you learned something. Thank you. Talk Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now leaving nerdist.com. dot <laughs>